kūre tanga for me is an understanding of a concept that is ancestral in its um, in its uh, uh, origins. It's about the the shape of the peninsula, which is Taranaki. It's about that shape and. That's one reference to it, and the other reference to it, which is more significant, is about um, all of the histories, all of the stories, all of the practices, all of the law, L O R E, of the people of Taranaki. Um, and so, Kure Tanga, in, as a title for this work, was to acknowledge that the work is coming from our people from our the essence of who we are here in Taranaki. Pera o ki, pera o ki ra te uka o te rangi te tuku tuku. Yeah, pera hoki is um, is a karakia waiata, and it talks about um, the relationship between the heaven and the earth through water and understand so understanding that water comes in many different forms from ice to snow to rain to mist all of those different things and in the different forms um, the water can find its way into all the into the aquifers through the soil um, um, into ponds and pools um, and and do what it does as water. So for me to be able to translate the, the dialogue into image, it was about finding the shapes and forms and combining them into, uh, into imagery that would represent the essence of the water, the, the way that water behaves, not so much about what it looks like um, as we know it, but about its behaviour and how it interacts. That's what I tried to achieve with um, Pero Hoki as the, the brief to the work um, in Kure Tanga. It was um, exciting to be given the opportunity, so and that, that's part of production because you know you have emotions, um, and I had to consider the the first brief, which was about Gavette Brewster Gallery having a relationship with community, broader community, iwi, hapu, and globally as well. Um, and so before I saw the space for the work, I had, I had to have an understanding of why I was going to be um, doing this work. Um, so, and that's very much for me is, is very much about process. Um, and then it was looking at the space, being introduced to the space and responding to that space initially. And when one sees the work, one doesn't see the work. There's, you, you don't see, the, see it in its entirety um, as you would view a, a normal painting or an image. So it was, so how do I engage with this space, with this wall? And, it, and then the... The studio that this wall is in, it, it, it there's a lot of um, what would you say uh, disconnects between space. There's lots of disconnects between space. There's lots of disconnects between um, how a person is wanting to interact with that space. Um, there's nothing standard about it, and so. It could easily cause a person, an, a, a practitioner, to say, no, I don't want to be involved. I don't want to do this because it's very challenging. And I kind of saw it as being about 
people or about the gallery um, being challenged by that process of interaction anyway. And I saw it at a personal level, I saw it about me being challenged by space. Previous works that I've done, you can't see all of the work. And I, I, so I took it as being, oh, well, maybe this is, this is the direction that, that my, my career has to go to, to challenge me, to test me. And once all of that became apparent, it was then about um, how, what is the space saying to me um, in terms of storyline? And for me, it was it was saying that the the heavens and the earth, the floor and the sky, needed to be connected. And the architecture was saying that that's what it it was doing. So I wanted to inter interact with it in that way as well. I didn't want on the design. I didn't want it to be another story of Rangi and Papa and that that creation process. And as important as that is, it, um, uh, Māori belief goes beyond that. It's ha what's happened since uh, the creation process. And Perohuki was um, uh, was the opportunity to discuss what has happened since, if you like. And that was introduced to me by Dr. Ruakere Hond. And he made it very clear in his explanation that that this spoke about Rangi and Papa in a way beyond that creation story. The original brief through the gallery, it was about um, Māori having, having a voice within the gallery and I wanted that so much for, for our tangata whenua to, to have a voice within the gallery because um, I have never had a voice in the gallery and there are many artists um, in this familiar um, or in a similar situation to myself, so this this was this was an important task. So that became part of the brief as well. With the work that takes that amount of time and is so intense, and there's all the pressures around it being finished because there's an opening coming up. There's all of those things. Very could have been very easy to lose self control around the process. Um, so karakia was an important part of the installation process. Um, and that was something that I imposed on myself and not on my assistants. They, they were obliging and took part when they were around, but that was very much a part of the process. And that was about, for me, that was about learning perahuki as a karakia waiata, but it was also about um, um, following tikanga um, through the creative process of, of toi Māori. Um, so yeah, tikanga was a very important part for me. It was about um, understanding that the images, the shapes, the form um, are old, ancient shapes and forms that have evolved, have been developed by our tipuna. That was exciting, knowing that, um, or is exciting, knowing that you know, me and this generation, I get to, to utilise those shapes and forms and I get to um, present them to community and through that process that people will be able to um, become familiar once more with them and hopefully be able to understand them. There was, yeah, there was, there was all that was part of the, the, uh, the creative process. Those final few days were a privileged moment um, because, yeah, I, I, I was able to release, you know, all of the emotion and all of those, all of those fears or all of those dreams and aspirations that I had for the work. I was able to release that in those last few days. Um, yeah, and I, I was really grateful for that. I, re I remember, I remember um, the clock tower chiming 7.45 and standing with the place completely cleaned. I had cleaned everything away and there was just, I had put the, uh, the audio of Perohuki on so that was playing and there was just myself, the karakia being chanted and the image at 7.45 in the evening, so it was dark, there wasn't a lot of light, and it was just awesome. Yeah.